to do new things, God. And we'll celebrate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I need you to air high five like 17 people and just say he's turning the water into wine. He's turning the water into wine. Turn the water into wine. You can have your seats today. Amen. So we started a series on last week. We started a series on last week called The Genius of Jesus. Somebody say The Genius of Jesus. We started a series on last week called The Genius of Jesus. And what we want to do is talk about the weird and the wacky and the wise things that Jesus said. And, and how many of you know sometimes Jesus says some weird things? Sometimes Jesus says some downright wacky things. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes, uh, of course, everything Jesus said was wise. But we want to get into the weird and the, and the wacky and the wise things that Jesus said. So, so this is one of the, my favorite stories in the Bible. This is one of my absolute favorite stories in the Bible. And it has to do with the, a time where Jesus has not begun doing miracles yet. Y'all chill with the lights, please. Has not begun doing miracles yet. Has not begun doing miracles yet. And his mother comes to him and says, look, 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 we got a problem. We got an issue. We got a problem. We got an issue. And, and Jesus, um, not being fully concerned with what's going on at that wedding, is always concerned with what's going on in your life. It's the beautiful thing about Jesus. Jesus is always concerned about what's going on with you personally. He's always concerned, but, and even though it may seem like he's looking at everybody else or checking out what everybody else is doing, I love the fact that his mother had such a personal relationship with him that she thought, hey, you can fix this. You can fix this. And I, I love that we serve a Jesus who, who, who can fix things. And as we get to this, I, I want to get to this as we start to talk about this, but I, I want you just to notice that Jesus is Jesus in his humanity here. Now this is weird because it's juxtaposed against uh, chapter 1. In chapter 1, Jesus is Jesus in his divinity. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and, and the word became flesh and dwelt among them. And so we get this idea about who Jesus was in the beginning in chapter 1 and about his wisdom and about his amazingness. And then in chapter 2, the wine runs out. Sometimes that's how your Christian life is. Everything is going great. Everything's going wonderful. Worship is off the chain. It's like the angels came in. And they, and they, and, 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 and they guided you around the room and you floated a little bit. Chapter one is always amazing. That's how it is in relationships too. Chapter one, everything's wonderful. Chapter one, everything's so good, girl. He called me. <laughs> Chapter one is always so wonderful. It's so amazing. It's full of amazement. And, 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 and I love chapter one, but sometimes in chapter two, this is where you get his humanity. You get his humanity. And so we get his divinity in chapter one and his humanity in chapter two. And we have to, we have to, we have to recognize that we serve a Jesus who is both God and man. It's a beautiful thing. The, 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 the God in Jesus wouldn't be concerned about your wine. Wine is a convenience for you. But I love that. He says he's, he's the God who supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. Are y'all in here today? So, so he, says, he, says, he says, this ain't got nothing to do with me. Now, before he gets to this point, I love the fact that his mom, as soon as she has an issue, she turns to Jesus. She gives us a good example here. As soon as you have a problem, you should turn to Jesus. As soon as you have an issue, you should turn to Jesus. As soon as it starts going crazy in your life, you should turn to Jesus. Don't turn to Facebook. Uh-oh. Don't, don't turn to Instagram. Turn to Jesus. If more of us turn to Jesus, I, I believe that we would feel better about ourselves. If more of us turn to Jesus, I believe that we can see life change happening in our lives. And when the trouble comes, when the drama comes, when the mess comes, how about we just turn to Jesus. Somebody say, turn to Jesus. So if I have a first note, and, and, and I'm already in this, uh, true genius is knowing where to turn 
when the water runs out. True, Jesus, true genius is knowing where to turn, excuse me, when the wine runs out. You got to stop turning to people who can't solve your problem. You got to stop turning to people who can't solve your issue. You got to turn to Jesus. True genius is knowing where to turn when the wine runs out. Because I want to remind you of something. The wine is going to run out. I don't care how wonderful it is. The wine is going to run out. I don't care. Look, look, I want to get early in this. I, I, I don't care how, how, how beautiful it feels. How beautiful that relationship makes you feel. How great he is or how great she is or how wonderful. The wine is going to run out. What do you do? What do you do when you feel like the wine is running out? What do you do? I was talking to a young lady in the kitchen this morning. She was saying, PD, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you, I don't know how you, how you keep yourself going. You know, when, sometimes when you get tired and when you just don't want to do it anymore, she said, but you're here. You're doing it all the time. I said, I, I learned something that Paul told Timothy. I learned how to stir up the gift that's on the inside of me. I learned how to stir up the gift. See, I know that eventually the wine's going to run out. And whatever had you going, whatever had you lifted, whatever had you up is going to bring you down. But you got to know how to stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. Look at somebody and just say, stir up the gift. You, you got to know how to stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. I'm not going to allow my wine to just run completely out. If I got a little wine, I'm going to put some water in it. I'm going to... Y'all know, I'm, I'm going to stir up the gift in here. If I got a little... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stir up the gift because it's my responsibility to keep the fire going in my life. That's right. Listen, nobody else can keep the fire going for you. You got to stir up the gift. But I want to let you know something else. If you got a little fire, you got a lot of fire. Y'all not here today. I said, if you got a little fire, you got a lot of fire because all it takes is a spark. All it takes is a little bit. And if I can just spark up a little bit, if I can fan the flame just a little bit, all of a sudden what was just a little bit of fire turns into a whole lot of fire. And next thing I know, I'm a forest fire. I'm a raging inferno because I got a little, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. No, no, y'all in this Anglican church, y'all not ready for that. <laughs> so you got to have something on the inside of you that you can stir up, that you can stir up. And so Jesus' mother, she comes to him and she says something so significant. She says, she says, we have run out of wine. Have any of you ever felt like that? Yeah. Run out of wine. I've run out of ideas. I, I own a business, but I've run out of ways to, to make it work, to make it go. I, I, I've, run out of way, I've, I, I've run out of ways to get, it to, to get it to do what I need it to do. I've run out of wine, and I want to I let you know something. If you've run out of wine, you, it, it, it's okay. You just turn to Jesus. Every time I felt like it's not working, every time I felt like, what am I doing doing this? Every time I felt like I'm not good enough or I'm not smart enough, or I'm not able to do this. I just turn to Jesus and he reminds me that it's not about me anyway. It's always about him. So everything I do is a reflection of who he is in my life and I'm going to do it to the best of my abilities. But I'm going to turn it over to Jesus because it's, it's not about me. Now, I, I want you to understand, I want to walk from here, okay? I want to walk from here, and I need, you to, I need you to be paying attention. I need you to walk with me, okay? So Jesus essentially dismisses Mary. Now, there's some arguments, Carrie, about whether or not Jesus is black. And I don't want to argue about that. I, I don't, people say Jesus is black. You know, he's probably Middle Eastern, but I don't want to argue about that at all. But Jesus' mama was definitely black. <laughs> Jesus may not have been black, but Jesus' mama, she was sure enough black. Jesus' mama said, Jesus' mama said, Jesus, we run out of wine. Jesus said, ma'am, that don't have nothing to do with me. She said, whatever he tell you to do. Did y'all read that? Y'all didn't read that? It's a smack. It's a smack right between those two verses. You got to be, you got to be reading. It's in the, it's in the Greek. It's a, it's a. He said, that don't have nothing to do with me. He said, it's, a, it's in the Greek. You got to read down into the. <laughs> she said, whatever he tell you to do, do it. That sounds like, like my mama right here. Look, 
whatever he tell you, I'm not arguing with you, Dante. Whatever I said, that's what I said. I said what I said. That's it. <laughs> Jesus' mama went straight black on him. She was like, whatever he tell you to do, do it. He didn't say nothing back either. So I don't know if he was black, but he was smart. <laughs> Jesus was a genius. <laughs> Jesus was a genius because he didn't say nothing back. He didn't say a thing. He was a grown man, 30 years old. I still ain't talking back to mama. That's it. Whatever he tell you to do, do it. I bet you he was like, dog, mama. Anyway, <laughs> so, so. He says this, Jesus says something, he starts to give them instructions. Now, pay attention, because whenever there is a need, instruction is going to happen. If you have a need in your life, instruction is going to come right after the need. And oftentimes we focus so much on the need that we ignore the instructions. We're so busy worrying about the need that we ignore the instruction. We're so busy caring about the need that we ignore the instruction. There was a young lady. I'm going to equivocate these two uh, stories for uh, just for your listening pleasure today. I need you to understand there's a young lady that is talking to a prophet in the Old Testament. And she says that I don't have anything except a little bit of wine. The Bible says that the, the man, he says, she says, so I'm going to take this little bit of wine and I'm going to make a cake for me and my son and we're going to die. Because it's all we got. And the Bible says that the prophet said unto her, he says, if you take that wine and start to pour it, then the wine will keep reproducing itself. See, there is always going to be an instruction after your need. If you take that, if you take that oil, excuse me, if you take that oil, that little bit of oil and you pour it out, he says that there'll be enough, there'll be enough for you. But if you ignore the instruction, you'll always have the need. Are y'all with me today? Are y'all with me today? Okay, so you got to pay attention to the instruction. Whenever you, feel, <laughs> whenever you feel like you don't have enough, start paying attention to what, what God is telling you in your life. Sometimes you'll say, God, well, I don't have enough money. And he'll say, pay your tithe. That wasn't God. That was Pastor Dante. Uh, <laughs> God wouldn't tell me to give if I told him I didn't have it to give. But if he tells you to give... If he tells you to give after he knows you don't have it to give, that means he has a plan that you know not of. Are y'all with me today? So you got to honor the instruction. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to honor the instruction. I'm going to honor the instruction that it matters to me. It matters to me what Jesus said, especially in my time of need. In my time of need, I don't know if you've ever been hungry in here, but in your, when you've been hungry, you start focusing. <laughs> like, I got to get finished. I'm hungry. I got to just, don't talk to me. But when you're hungry for something in God, it's the same thing. You got to start focusing on the instruction. What did he tell you to do? What did he tell you to do? Now, I love that she got, she went and got some service. She said, listen, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Now, the instruction matters. Somebody say the instruction matters. Jesus tells these young men to go outside and get six water pots. Somebody say six water pots. He said, now get six stone pots. Now, I need you to understand something because we, we don't read this right. Um, particularly because of the King James Version of the Bible. The, the King James Ber Version of the Bible says something like, uh, go fill it up with this many firkins of water. And you, you said firkin? No, I don't know what that is. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> but that's why we wanted to read it today in the New Living Translation. Because the New Living Translation says, he says, fill it up. With 20 to 30 gallons of water. Now, six water pots that hold 20 to 30 gallons of water. That's a big water pot. And he told every man to get one water pot. Does that make sense? So six servants went out and got six water pots. Six servants went out and got six water pots. And they filled them up with water. Now, I'm going to bring some water pots out onto the stage. I'm hoping we don't make a mess up here. But uh, we're going to get some water pots out onto the stage. But he says six servants take six water pots. Now, the equivalency of, of one water pot would have been the weight of one adult male. Six is always the number of what? So the six is always the number of men. Don't try to do this by yourself. Look at this. We're going to make a mess up in here. Get some help. <laughs> okay, all right. Jesus. 
<laughs> Y'all drop this demonstration. Okay, all right, awesome. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Give it up to the servants. Give it up to the servants. Okay. Let me check my notes because I'm going to get y'all to take this. Come, come take this. No, don't take this. I need this. Coming back to that. Six servants get six, six water pots. Those gallons would have been the equivalent of the weight of one person, the weight of one person, the weight of one person, the weight of one adult male. And it would have been significant that each male had to carry a male. Because sometimes you might have to carry somebody. Sometimes you're going to have to bring somebody to Jesus. You're going to have to carry somebody. And I love that it was stone water pots. So they would have these things that they weren't this beautiful. They were, this is, this is beautiful. My wife is, she gave me this. This is gorgeous, right? It's pretty. Okay. But it wouldn't have been pretty. It would have been ugly. Big and strong and ugly. This, how, this, how your, this is how your issues feel. Your items, your issues, this is how your life feels. It's, it's, it's stone, it's heavy, it's hardened, and, and it's ugly. And you don't want to let anybody know what you're dealing with. But God said, I, I don't care what you're dealing with. Just fill it up with water. You got to fill it up with water. Whatever it is, whatever your, dr whatever your trouble is, whatever your drama is, you, you got to fill it up with water. This is what the, we call the washing of the word. I got to fill myself up with the word. More word. I need more water. And I need less Facebook and more water. I need less Instagram and more water. I need less gossip. Oh, geez. I need less gossip. Oh, geez. I need less gossip. I need more water. So I want to pour the water in. I want to pour the water in. He said, now fill it up. These things would have held between 20 and 30 gallons of water already. But he said, no, no, no. I need you to fill it up to his, to its capacity. Oh, Jesus. I need you to fill it up till it overflows. I need you to fill it up to its capacity. I need more and more of God. I need more and more of Jesus. I need more and more. I'm not enough. That's why we call ourselves God chasers. Because we will never catch the capacity of who God is. We just keep filling ourselves up with more and more. Every week I'm going to come back and fill myself. I need more of God. I need more of God. Is there anybody in here who just feels like, I need more of you, Jesus? I don't have it all together. In fact, I got a lot going on in my life, but God, I need more of you. I can't take no time off. I need a feeling. I can't take a day off. I need a feeling. I need an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And I come here to get my cup filled. Fill my cup. I need more of the water. Fill my cup until it overflows. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting in my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting in my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me whole. You got to have a thirsting for the filling. You got to have a thirsting for the feeling, but you also got to have capacity for the feeling. So the Bible says that they take these cups and they fill them to the capacity. Excuse me, not these cups. They take these water pots and they fill them to the capacity. Now understand this. This would have made way more wine than was needed for the rest of the night. But Jesus is always always going to do more than enough the bible says he will do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think some of y'all got some dreams some of y'all got some hopes you got some plans but god said i'll do exceedingly abundantly more than will you give me the opportunity will you turn to me when the wine is running out will you turn to me when it feels like the water's going dry he said and i'll feel your capacity 
You got to understand that God is going to fill you to, only to your capacity to receive. He said, fill it to the brim. Fill it to the brim. And then he said, now take it and bring it to me. He said, he said now take it and bring it to me. And then the Bible says he blessed it. He blessed it. Let God bless your water. Let God bless your water. Let God bless your little, your, your, whatever your try is. See, you got to learn how to let God bless your try. It's not enough, but God, here it is. It's not enough. It's just a dime. It's not enough, but here it is. It's not enough. Here, here's my worship right here. here here's, here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. See, you got to know how to bring it to God. Whatever it is, I'm gonna bring it to God. I'm gonna bring my little jug. Let me help me help me, Chauncey, real quick. You too far away. <laughs> there we go. Right? Thank you so much. I, I, I gotta know how to bring it to God. Now, now, now. Understand something. In order to fill it up, they had to take water from vessels and pour it into other vessels. They had to take water from one vessel, pour it into another vessel. See, 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 we, we, we're in this new age where everybody, oh, I'm just so spiritual. No, no, no. You need a vessel that is pouring into you. I just get my word from the Lord. No, that's not what Jesus did. He said, take, take water from vessels and fill up another water. See, it is the water from me that fills you up. It is the water from PK that'll fill one of y'all. It's the water from you that fills somebody else. It's the water. And so you, what, you, you, we talked about this a little bit yesterday at our leadership uh, class. But I, I don't need the man. I need the water. You so busy thinking about the vessel. When what you need is the water. I need, I need to have a, a coffee with uh, Pastor Adriano. I need the water. God uses vessels. Listen, he uses... He uses vessels to pour water from vessel to vessel. Okay? Now, the anointing is not in the vessel. The anointing is in the pour. The anointing is not in the vessel. The anointing is in the pour. It is my obedience. Hear, hear me right here. It is my obedience to Jesus that qualifies me for a miracle. Every miracle in the Bible is, pro, is preceded by an act of faith and obedience. Every one. You think you can not obey God and get the miracles of God? That's not how it works. The, the miracle happens. The miracle happens. The anointing happens when you are obedient to what God said. So as I get it, oh, hear me right here. I want to see the anointing, so I'm going to be obedient to the word. I'm going to be obedient to what God said. I'm going to move when God says move. And when I move, that's when the miracle happens. It's your obedience to God that qualifies you for the first Miracle. Y'all got this? Your obedience to God is what qualifies you for the first miracle. Okay. Okay. So now they got this, this water and they filled it up and they bring it to Jesus and Jesus blesses it. And then he says something else. He says, now go and pour it out. Wait, what? You just told me to fill it up. Yeah. Fill it up. Pour it out. Wait, you just told me to fill it up, man. I, it took a lot. I brought, I took one vessel. I went, I went to the other vessel. He said, yeah, fill it up and pour it out. The power is in the pouring. The power is in the pouring. So there is an exchange that's being happened. So Kevin, come here real quick. Hold this microphone. There's an exchange that's, being, that's happening when I learn how to pour. Bring it up to me. When I learn how to pour, all of a sudden, something powerful is happening. I'm going to make a mess up here, but that's okay. Something powerful is happening, and you don't recognize how beautiful. I took something that, from a full vessel, and I poured it into an empty vessel. I took something from a full vessel and I poured it into an empty vessel. Commercial, side note, I want to show you something. Side note, what's the difference between a vase and a vessel? What's the difference between a vase and a vessel? It, the only difference between a vase and a vessel is what's in it. 
hear me right here. Because since I was going to use what was inside this, now it used to be a vase because it just sat there pretty and it had some fake flowers in it. It had some fake fruit on it. And it looked beautiful. And I could make people think it was awesome. But all of a sudden, when I take the fake out, and I pour something alive in it, and I pour something real in it, all of a sudden, I could use it to give God glory. And the only difference between a vase and a vessel is that one of them is for God's use. We talked about this before. Give me one second. We talked about this. Oh, I'm good, Kevin. I'm good. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm good. I did the hard part. Okay, we talked about this before. We talked about this before. And I, I, I want to make sure you understand that the only difference between profane and holy is God's ability to use it. It's not special. It's holy. It's not, it's, oh, oh, oh. Each one of you guys in here are unique, beautiful, amazing, but not special. Not special. No, no, no. But what you can be is holy. When I say, God, use me, Lord. Use me. I don't have much, but use me, Lord. I haven't figured it all out, but use me, Lord. I haven't done, I haven't done the homework. I haven't done the science. I haven't done the math, but I'm available to be used. And then all of a sudden, people start saying, I don't know how she did that. I don't know how he did that. I don't know why that's even still working. How did they even do that? And you say, I, 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 I'm not special. I'm just holy. I'm used for God. So as I pour, I turn something, I turn something that's normal into something holy. When I say I'm gonna use this for God, I take it as it's normal. And I made it holy. I want you to get this. I want you to understand something. The power is in the pour. Who are you pouring into? Who's pouring into you? There are two, there are two silent exchanges in this story that we don't see. The first one is that they pour water into the water pots to fill the water pots the bible says fill them to the brim thank you jesus i can't never get enough i ain't never had enough church well i need i need a break from what i need a, i need a, i need more jesus more jesus more jesus fill me up to the brim and then they pour it out of the water pots into a different container. He said, now pour it into the serving containers. And when I pour it into the serving containers, what I'm saying is I want to make it available for people who are thirsty. People, listen, I want to help you. Some people need what you got. Some people need what you have to offer. And you so worried that, uh, that they'll taste it and think it's water that you won't pour it. But I need you to understand something. You got to pour it even when you think it's not good. Oh, Jesus. Even when you think it's not perfect. You got to start your business even when you're not ready to start a business. You got to start your thing even when you're not ready to do it. You got to go ahead and, and, and go for it because you don't know where in the story that the water turns to wine. We don't know where in the story. We just know that we were obedient to Jesus. Mm, Lord have mercy. I, I don't know where in the story that the water turned to wine. I just know that I was obedient to Jesus. I don't know where in the story that it all started working out for my good. But I just know that I was obedient to Jesus. And all of a sudden, what used to be water turned into wine. And you're so afraid that people are going to taste it and see that it's still water. But if you pour it out. If you pour it out, I promise you, God won't let it fail for you. But you got to be a, you got to have a pouring in your spirit. I don't know when it turned from water into wine. I just know I liked her a whole lot. And I said, I'm going to marry her and we're going to live holy and we're going to live righteous. And uh, I, I don't know if after one year we were still fighting hard after one year. I don't know if it was wine yet. I don't know if at our, our fifth year anniversary, that it, if it was wine yet, uh, we might have got the seven year itch, but we stayed close together. We stayed together and we kept loving. I don't know if it was wine yet. I don't know if at 10 years or at 15 years or at 17 years or at 19 years or at our 22nd anniversary. But all I know is eventually it started to taste good. Eventually, God started to bless it. Eventually, somehow, it started to be wine. And I, I don't know if on April the 6th it was wine. 
It was still hard. We were really trying to do what God told us to do. I don't, I don't know if after our one year anniversary, it was one. I don't know. We were really trying. We were just saying, God, use it. I don't know what this is, this dark church. I don't know what it is with this loud music, but God, you can use it. I don't know if after the third year, after our 200 service, I don't know if after the third year or the fourth year, it turned all of our, all of a sudden, it just started tasting good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I'm here to remind you. I'm here to remind you. Here to remind you. That though you'd still think it's water, people don't see water no more. See, did y'all... Y'all get this? I'm gonna get, I, I want to get further into the story, but yeah, yeah, I need you to get this. The Bible says that, that the master of ceremonies saw it was wine. The servants knew what it was. This is my problem, Drea. Because every time I get up in the morning, I feel like it's not enough. I know what it is. I watched it come from the outside to the inside. I knew it was just water. When I poured it out, when I, when I put my notes together, I know what it is. I know it's not enough. I know it's just water to me. Mm. But through my obedience, hear me right here. It is when you get obedient to God, all of a sudden that little business, oh Lord Jesus, that little catering business, oh Lord Jesus, all of a sudden that little job where you're working in the mail room and then all of a sudden you move up to middle management and then you decide, well, I need to step because they don't appreciate my value, but I, everything I learned, I'm going to take it with me and start my own business. And it always feels like a struggle. It always, no matter where you are, it always feels like a struggle because you know how it started. You know that it started with water. Just my little bit of water, God. I'm not perfect, but I, I'm pouring it out. I don't got it all together, but I'm pouring it out. Casey and JJ sitting there practicing their scales. I don't know how... To, this do re mi fa so do re mi fa do re do re mi fa so. I don't know how it turns into my career. It's just water. It's just water. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep pouring it out. Gee, I'm gonna keep pouring it out. I'm gonna keep giving it away. I'm gonna keep pouring it out. And somewhere along the line, somewhere in the story, that water becomes wine. I don't know what your water is. I don't know what your water is. My, my, my job, my job is not to define it for you. My job is to fill you up. And your job is to receive it. Even if it feels like water, I'm just going to fill my jar. I'm just going to fill my jar. I'm just going to fill my jar until my water becomes wine. He says, now take that. I want you to do something. He says, y'all with me today? Take it out of the vessel, the stone pot, pour it into the serving vessel, and then give some to the maitre d'. He said, and somewhere along the line, that clear water that you poured out, he said, if you serve that to somebody, now take a drink. It's the best wine. It's the best wine. Can we give God a praise all over this building? I need you to know that as you pour it out, as you pour it out, God is trying to do something in your life. But you got to be willing to pour it out. You got to be willing to give. And the genius of Jesus, the genius of Jesus is to remind us to pour at every opportunity, at every chance you get. I want you to pour it out even if you think it's not enough. God, thank you, Jesus. Even if you think it's not enough, God said, you don't know when I'll turn that water into wine. You don't know when I'll use that circumstance. I'm working it out for your good. You thought it wasn't anything, but God said, I turned it around to make it work for your good. I need you to air high five somebody and just say, God is working it out for your good. He's working it out. 
he's working it out and I gotta keep pouring and I gotta keep singing and I gotta keep clapping and I gotta keep praising I gotta keep praising until I till my water it may not seem like nothing to you it may not seem like my little praise dance may not seem like nothing to you but I got a praise on the inside And you got to keep praising. I don't do it like everybody else. You're not supposed to. I don't sing as good as everybody. You're not supposed to. I got my own vintage. It's my own flavor. You know why it's called Chardonnay? Chardonnay is not a flavor. Chardonnay is not a flavor. Chardonnay is a place. If it comes from that place, it's Chardonnay. I want you to understand something because there is a vintage of wine that will only come from you. It'll only come from the place where you are. And when you pour it out, thank you, Jesus. When you pour it out, when you pour it out, you don't know how many people will crave for the things that came from your crushing. You don't know how many people will be blessed by what came from your crushing. It's not a flavor, it's a place. It came from where I was. It came from what I went through. You don't understand, it came from my first marriage. Oh, you don't understand. It came from, I, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't good, but it worked for my good. And all of a sudden, through the pouring, 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 God took what I thought was water. He blessed somebody with it. Ask a rich person when they became rich. They have no idea. Not a, not a, not, not, not a lottery winner. Not somebody who just won some money somebody who earned it a self-made millionaire ask them when was the point that they became rich they'll say I don't know some of them will say I'm not rich yet you'll be looking at their cars and their houses and everything they got in there you'll say well you rich you rich to me what they saying is it's just my water I just took my water and poured it out I just took my water. I just took I, I just I just took my water and poured it out. And some of you have business ideas and you have places you want to go and things you want to do. You have strategy inside you and you think, "Oh, this is just water." It's not nothing. And God said it wasn't anything until you poured it out. And all of a sudden, what was water in this place? Water in this place becomes wine in this place. Y'all heard me say this before. First, I got on this thing. <laughs> then I got on this thing. And God says, I want to use the wine that's on the inside of you. I want to use the wine that's on the inside of you. Listen, I want you to hear me right here. Come on, everybody standing on their feet. I want you to hear me right here. Because what happened to a lot of you... What happened to a lot of you is you let the use from your youth become the eyes in your adulthood. And whatever people said about you, you took it. People said you weren't enough. You weren't good enough. You weren't pretty enough. You weren't smart enough. They said it in elementary and middle school and you took it and you took it and you took it and now you define yourself by it. But God said, no, I'm working out something else in your life. I'm working out something else. He said, I'm about to turn it into wine. I'm about to turn it into wine. And everything you prayed for and everything you cried about, he said, watch, when you pour it out, I'm going to turn it into wine. I want you to understand this. I don't, I don't tell you to get up, clap, turn around, high five three people. Not for me. I don't do that for me. I do it for you. So that you can teach your flesh that is not in charge. 
that there is something God is doing in my spirit. That is something I don't care how I feel about it. Lord have mercy. I don't care that I, I don't feel strong. God says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I don't feel capable. But God says I, he can do exceedingly, abundantly more than I can ask a thing. And I don't feel like I'm enough. But you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. So I want you to do this just right where you are. Lift up your hands. And just say, God, I received the wine of my next season, God. I received the wine of this next season, God. I received the wine. I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it. I know you're changing some things. I know you're fixing some things, God. And I receive it now. I, I receive it now. I don't know everything, but what I do know, God, is I'm going to pour it out, God. I'm going to pour out everything you poured into me, God. And I'm going to refill my jar. I'm going to refill my cup, God. And I believe, thank you, Jesus. I believe, God, that what seems like water to me is going to be wine in your hands, God. What seems like not enough in my hands is going to be more than enough in your hands. And if you believe that if you believe that I want you to take 30 seconds and just give God the best praise you can give him I want you to give God the best praise you can give him I want you to give God the best praise you can give him wait, wait, wait. and I hear somebody right now even with that you saying I'm clapping my hands right now and I'm shouting right now and it feels fake, but it's not fake, it's faith. I'm clapping in faith. I'm believing in faith. I'm screaming out in faith that God is gonna save the best one. God is gonna save the best one. He's gonna work it out for my good. Somebody give God a praise in this. Lift your hands, lift your voice and say, fill me up, God. 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 Come on, receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it. Say it, say it. Now listen, I want to do something. You say, Pastor Dante, I've been feeling empty. I've been trying, trying to read my Bible. I've been trying to go to church, but I've been feeling empty. There's something. I, I, I've been feeling empty. Listen, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to run to this altar. I want to pray for you. If, you, if that's you, if you said, I've been feeling empty, I've been feeling like I'm not enough, I've been feeling like I'm not doing enough or I'm not being enough, I want, to, I want you to recognize that through God, you are more than enough, but I want you to come down to this altar. Come on, come on, y'all turn around. I want you to come down to this altar and we want to pray with you. You said, God, I've been feeling empty. I've been feeling like I'm not enough. This is your, this is your space. 
this is your place this is your space come down to this altar come on Vani y'all come down to this altar come on we want to pray with you and I believe God is about to fill you up in fact let's go ahead and just lift up our hands and get ready to receive what God is about to do in your life God is about to fill you up God is about to fill you up God is about to refill you. There's going to be a replenishing. There's going to be a refilling in your circumstance. There's going to be a refilling in you. If that's you today, come on. Let's pray. Let's pray. Come on. 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 Fill me up. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. There's going to be a refilling. There's going to be a refilling. God said he's going to do it. He's going to make the change. It's not going to be about what's in your hands. It's going to be about what you put in his hands. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Hallelujah. That's going to be a refilling. Hallelujah. for the refilling. Thank God for the refilling. Receive it now. 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 Hallelujah.
I receive your oil, Jesus. Not my will, but thine, God. Not my will, but thine, God. Not my will, but thine, God. I want to be a vessel, God. Six water pots. Six is the representative number of men in the Bible. Stone water pots hardened by the sun, by the outside, by outside circumstances. Six water pots. You fill each water pot up with 30 gallons of water. 30 gallons of pure water, six water pots. You fill them up with 30 gallons of pure water. Six times 30 is 180. It's time for some of y'all to make a 180 degree change. God is calling you to make a 180 degree change in your life. God is calling you to make a 180 degree change in your circumstance. But listen, your circumstance is a lot to, that has a lot to do with your decisions. Here's the decision today. You can make a decision to receive Christ. To receive Christ. There's no more important thing that we will do here than offer you Christ. And I don't believe, you might have come here, I, I don't care if you got invited here or you just saw the sign outside, but the Bible says no one comes to the Father unless he is drawn by the Holy Spirit. If you're in this room today, God is drawing you closer to him. But it's time for some of y'all to make a 180 degree change. That's what it means to repent. It means I'm going in one direction and then I make a 180 degree turn to another direction. This is the season. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we're going to all say a prayer. And I would that you would say it with us so nobody feels alone. We're going to all say it together. But if you mean it in your heart, I believe this could be the day when everything changes. I want you to bring your water pot to Jesus. If that's you on today, repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life change my life father today i receive you as my lord and savior in jesus name i pray amen and amen listen i'm going to count to three and on the count of three i want you to raise your hand if that was your first time saying that prayer or maybe it was your thousand time but it was your first time meaning it i want you to raise your hand as accepting jesus christ as your lord and savior one it doesn't matter how you got here nobody comes to the holy spirit unless they are drawn here two it doesn't matter what your neighbor to the right or the left of you does the only thing that matters is your relationship with god here it is three raise your hand as high as you can raise it if you accept in Jesus as your Lord and Savior come on I'm counting one two three come on four five come on come on raise that hand raise that hand six I see you I see you I see you I see you and the saints are rejoicing all over this building as we sing it come on feel me 